Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Tyler back with part number two of what have I been buying really since Christmas, all since the, for the new year. Um, everything that I've bought in this box, other than this row here, is all from 2022 and I have everything already pre-screened, ready to send off to get graded by PSA. I showed you guys part one, all those cards are going off to PSA to get graded as we speak. And now we're gonna dive deep into this box to let you guys know what is it that I, Tyler, have been buying in 2022. All right, so again, over $60,000 in real hard earned cash. <laughs> been going out my pocket into somebody else's for all these cards and we're gonna go through every single one. So put the box down and we are gonna go through each stack. This is the beginning stack, and uh, again, no particular order. These cards are just kind of random, and I have them in the order basically of whenever I bought them. I guess is probably a good way to put it. Um, so there's a little bit of randomness to this, but everything that I do is logged into an Excel spreadsheet, so I don't get any cards out of order. Everything is just the way it is, so that whenever a PSA opens and I get allocations for whatever service for each card, I'm ready to go. So everything is prepped, and we're ready to go. First up, okay, so we got a Topps Chrome Black Joey Bart Orange Refractor. This is a little bit of an overpay. Uh, at some point, we'll go through financials once we break down each individual card once it gets back from PSA, whenever that is. This is a card that I probably won't send uh, unless bulk opens back up. Uh, but again, nice, really nice orange refractor. Here's a Freddie Freeman Gold Refractor. Again, these are probably going to be cards that I submit bulk. I'm not paying $50 to get these cards graded through an economy. Um, I think that that is way too much money. There's not any meat on the bone. Uh, bulk is likely gonna have a declared value up to $4.99. That is my prediction. That's what they finished uh, whenever they suspended um, bulk, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, these are gonna be cards that will not sell for over $500 in PSA 10 grades. Next up. The GOAT. I don't think he's the GOAT, but other people, most most people think he's the GOAT. He, he's the winningest quarterback for sure. You guys saw, I'm sending off three of these off to get graded in one of my economy submissions. Uh, so I've got plenty of these and they're scattered. Again, they're scattered just based on whenever I got them. Eventually, I'll, I may organize them depending on how I submit these later. Steph Curry, Upper Deck Draft Rookie. Again, these cards look really, really good. A lot of these older cards, there could be some PSA 9s in here, but I'm okay with that. Some of these cards, if they go bulk, I'm okay with 9s. If, if I go f faster than that, I want some 10s. Victor Acosta, Mega Box Pink. Again, that's a nice bulk card. He's going to be buried in the low minors for several years, so I am perfectly okay letting him mash and getting hyped to build. So I've got some Mega Boxes. There's plenty of Mega Boxes of his. Also have one of the uh, diamond light. I want to say these are diamond lights, the black and white light box. I think those are the parallels that came out of there. Uh, Corbin Carroll, uh, he is an Arizona guy. Um, he's a flying up the charts on top prospect list. He's a guy who got hurt last year. He, he started off hitting the ball amazingly well. Um, and I like buying these cheap autographs. I mean, cheap autographs, really uh, low risk. He's a guy who's now a top 30, top 40 prospect. And if he mashes, which, you know, if he hits the way he did last year, there's a good chance that he's going to climb up. So, I mean, getting an autograph of him for 10 bucks, I'll do that bulk uh, any day, assuming that we get some bulk later on in the fall. Travis Kelsey, my main man. Travis Kelsey. So there are only around six or seven of these graded by PSA. I got a lot of these. Uh, the seller also had a green that he threw in, which is really rare. Green didn't look gradable, but the red pulser looks like it's gradable. Top to bottom is a little bit off-centered, so uh, this is probably going to be a bulk card. I'm not going to submit that fast because I don't think it's going to gym. I mean, it, it could, but um, I'm not super confident in it. Nick York. Nick York is definitely a guy that I like, so I'm, you're going to see a bunch of these. So Bowman's best. I think there's a lot of value. This guy can absolutely smash. And yes, there's a lot, been a lot of people talking about uh, this guy. I have the purple Bowman Chrome that I'm going to send off. 
Uh, it is sent off actually. Uh, the Bowman's Best, on the other hand, I've, I've got several of these. I'm gonna be waiting for bulk, um, have a refractor. Uh, some of these cards actually do have some vertical lines, so I'm gonna, the way that I'm gonna be sending these in is probably gonna be bulk, um, dual autograph grade, because I'm gonna have plenty, plenty of autographs to send in, even for bulk, uh, more than likely. Uh, Sterling, Sterling of this year, this is the first Sterling card that I got of 2021. There weren't a lot of big name prospects that had a first Sterling card this year. There's a lot of repeats. I usually don't like repeats, but I, I just bought a, a Nick York Sterling second year autograph, uh, and it looked very clean. So um, eventually if he hits the way I think he's gonna hit, uh, there's gonna be a lot of people that want his cards. Mike Trout. This is a really, really nice card. This is a 2013 Mini, parallel number to 25. This is the oddball stuff that people love. Ginter collectors, Trout collectors, 2013 collectors. I mean, 2013, uh, the year after his rookie cup, you know, a lot of people uh, really like the 2013 year for some reason, um, uh, his stuff. So still, it's early Trout, early Trout parallels, numbered. It's not base that's overprinted. This is a rare Trout card. Probably not worth sending for $50. Again, this is stuff that I always have submitted bulk, and I'm going to continue to do that moving forward. Christian Hernandez, kind of the same thing. Uh, unless this guy lights it on fire before bulk uh, comes out, uh, which would warrant a, a, an increase to economy. This is a card that, again, is going to go bulk. So definitely going to go bulk there. Uh, gosh, I can't remember what I paid for the Transcendent autograph of his. So uh, this is probably, again, bulk. Going to be a bulk card. Uh, maybe economy. Again, just depends on how he does. So we'll see. Next up, Shohei Otani Mega Box Purple. Beautiful card. I'm a little torn on what to do with this one. So this is a card that likely will qualify for economy, or will absolutely call it qualify for economy. Could qualify for regular. Actually, it would qualify for regular. I've sent several of these express, actually. So I'm just not confident that this one is going to gem. I think that it has a back edge flaw on it. So I don't want to submit it at a level that's going to push the value over a thousand dollars because I don't. If it comes back a nine, uh, you know, there's no point in me sending it above economy. So this is economy. Or uh, I'm going to try it with maybe a Beckett at some point. So uh, this is a TBD. Just kind of depends on how my allocations uh, end up getting shifted out and spread out. This is a card I was super excited about getting in the mail. And then whenever I got it, I was a little disappointed. Because this is a card that is off-center left to right. This is definitely going to be an economy card. Um, not not high or lower. It's going to be a PSA 9. It's off way more off left to right than what I thought that it was going to be. It's a little disappointing. More Freddie Freeman. So Freddie Freeman, this is an autograph uh, on-card Brooklyn collection. This is going to be a bulk card. You, you will not see volatility in these cards at all. It's an on-card autograph of, a, of an MVP and a World Series champion. Um, on-card autographs of him are pretty much going to be highly desired from here until the end of time, unless Russia blows us off the face of the map, which is a possibility. Next up, we've got Juan Soto and Ronald Acuna Jr. I saw this card pop up, and I always see these mega duels pop up. And yes, it's from Topps Fire. It's not the most uh, in-demand product out there. But getting a duel of the two young stars is a must. I mean, this is like Trout Harper. This is Acuna Vlad. This is, or um, uh, well, yeah, Acuna Vlad, Fernando Tatis Jr. and Vlad Guerrero Jr., I mean, there's these iconic duels that are must-haves that you just have to get. So I bought it, hoping that it might be Jim. This is probably going to be a nine. The back chipping uh, or slash corner, I think it's probably going to hold it back to a nine. Not a good duel, uh, you know, auto grade and card issue because again, Acuna Jr. just streaky signature, and so is Soto. So this is just going to be something I want to send off to get PSA nine. Just get it slabbed. Um, and again, there's only 20 of these out there, so it's probably going to be relatively low. Well, it will be low pop for sure. Wander Franco, Mo Red Mojo, this is from 2021. So uh, I sent off the Green Mojo uh, in one of my economy orders. Next time I get some allocations for some autographs. Uh, actually, this one may just go regular because I don't want to get the duel since it is a little bit streaky of an autograph. But uh, this will be in one of my next economy orders for sure. Derek Jeter, this is old school, finest black refractor number to 99. Uh, really nice, unique. Um, I'm unsure, this, this, these cards were uncirculated, so the uncirculated sticker is removed. I'm not sure if they, these somebody has actually popped this out, but the card looks good. 
Uh, centering looks pretty solid, left to right, top to bottom. Um, I don't really see much wrong with it. I can't imagine that somebody's tampered with this card. Uh, so I think it's going to be a pretty good card to grade. Probably going to be a bulk card. It's, it's again, not, not something I'm going to send off fast. Next up, Derek Jeter, finest uh, gold refractor, number 50 of 50 out of the um, flashback, finest fly, or flashback finest. I don't know. I forget the name of the set. Um, you guys have seen these types of cards. This is the second year in a row that they've done this. This is a retro of the 1994 finest set, I believe. And a beautiful card. Just, just gorgeous. It's a gold refractor. It will likely either go economy or bulk. Surprisingly, I mean, these a PSA 10 of this will not go above 500. I graded a Mike Trout from last year uh, that came back. I want to say it was either a Beckett 95 or a PSA 10, and it I think it barely cracked 600. So I, I didn't even break, didn't even come out positive on that card after grading it. Um, whenever you consider the fees, so. Uh, that'll probably be a bulk card. I know I'll probably get a lot of flat pushback for that, but again, I don't think it's going to crack 500. Patrick Mahomes, optic rookie. I love patty cake. So of course I'm going to have some, some optics spread in. It's probably an economy card. Tom Brady tops pristine. Uh, depending on how many of these I get through, this will either be bulk or it will be economy. Early Tom Brady Jersey card. So we're talking about 2002 upper deck first team fabrics, authentic game used Jersey. Definitely going to be sending this one in bulk. It may have some issues, whether it be something back here on the back. Overall, the card looks clean besides that, um, which I don't even know if that's part of the card or not. I'm just now seeing that um, now that I look at it. But either way, it's an early Tom Brady jersey. I think that that's where a lot of money is going to be going, and, and wisely so. Next up, uh, again, another Tom Brady 2003. This is the Skybox uh, Limited Edition. Just a base card, die cut, but it does look pretty good. Uh, pretty low pop. Not many people know about these. Not many people search Fleer. Not many people search Skybox. But uh, back in the early days, it was the golden age of collecting, in my opinion, because you had the brands of all the brands really just competing for dollars. Okay, let's see what else we got. All right, the next stack. So, we are not done with Tommy Boy. So I ended up getting, I want to say this is the only Ginter uh, card that Brady has that's, that's uh, I can't remember if it's his only Ginter card or what, it's like an E-Tops Ginter card from 2007, I want to say. Not sure how these are going to do. I got both of these from a consigner. Now, they are sealed. Um, I haven't really looked them over that close, but it, it looks like the corners are going to be okay because these cases actually had recesses in them where the corners don't bang up against the the side, which is good. So th these are these don't pop up that often. Limited to $9.99. They kind of have that refractor finish, although they're not refractors. That's just how the card is made. So... We'll see how that goes. Um, I think that these are going to be, at least hopefully one of them pulls a gem, probably going to be bulk. Again, I like submitting some bulk cards. These are cards that are not going to go down in value. Again, it's Tom Brady. It's numbered. It looks shiny. These are the cards that will appreciate over time. They're not mass-produced base cards, so I'm, I'm comfortable not having to rush pushing these in. These are just, they could sit in my closet for five years, and I could send them in for PSA later, and I'll still be okay. There's a lot of these types of cards that whenever I'm sitting on them, I'm okay sitting on them. I, I'm not in a hurry to get rid of them like I was in early spring because I didn't think that PSA was going to shut down you know, last spring. Nobody really anticipated that happening. Now, all the buys that I'm making are hopefully intelligent buys where cards aren't necessarily going to be going up and down and, and as volatile. I'm not buying as volatile cards. Like again, Travis Kelsey rookie is, this is early prism. This is second year prism. It's the blue pulser. So it, I'll send this off with the red pulser. Hopefully uh, this one's a little bit off center, top to bottom as well. But you know, hopefully I pull a gem on one of these guys. But this is a low pop stuff, uh, high demand stuff, even, you know, relatively not high pop, but Larger base set like Mahomes. These are highly sought after commodity cards. So I have a couple of those still here sprinkled in. Nikola Jokic. This is second year optic and it is the teal parallel and it is a beauty. It's number 25. You don't see a lot of Joker stuff out there um, graded like this. And to be quite honest, I think that Joker is going to probably continue to appreciate in hobby value because he's just an amazing basketball player. 
I don't care about Instagram likes. I don't care about Instagram follows. Uh, I think the future generation of basketball fan is starting to see through all the BS from uh, really what the modern day NBA is. And I think they're gravitating more towards guys like Joker who don't put up with people's bullshit like the Morris uh, brothers. You know what? Joker just hauls off and knocks their ass off. So, Of course, you know that the Nuggets yeah! have history with the Morris brothers, particularly Marcus Morris. So a couple of checks, and we'll see how the officials sort this one out. I like that. I became a fan whenever I saw that happen. I wanted somebody to knock one of those guys out. Joker did it. And that kind of basketball where you just don't put up with a bunch of bullshit, I love it. And he's also just one of the most efficient basketball players of all time. I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan. Ready to buy some more Joker stuff. Shohei Otani. This is a little bit off-center, top to bottom. I've graded a bunch of these guys. We'll see how this one goes. I don't know. This one's probably going to be an economy order. Uh, definitely not anything faster. Again, we talked about Corbin Carroll. I think that I have four more of these. Um, and the only thing that worries me about him is he, he kind of has a small frame. He's like an Alec Thomas in a way. Um, although, you know, I've, I've seen some comparisons of him and Alec Thomas about who's a better prospect. Um, I like Corbin Carroll. The injury is the only thing that concerns me. Uh, I like Zach Veen better than both of them, though. So this is another Sapphire that I bought. Um, so I've got maybe two of these in the backlog now. So that will hopefully be something I get, get back um, maybe within the next year. This is a card that I want to get back in the next year. Uh, Jeremy Pena. So you all saw that I sent off the Speckle. I do have a Sapphire. I don't think that the Sapphire is going to uh, be Jim. I thought that it had a surface issue up here. This is either going to be a bulk or it is going to be an economy. I really don't want to send it economy, especially if it's not going to be gym mint, which is a waste of $50 in my opinion. Anthony Volpe, my guy. Yes, you thought that I was done submitting Anthony Volpe. What do y'all think? Y'all think I'm done? Hell no, 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 no. I'm still buying, man. I told you what. I'm telling you. I haven't got another blue. Look at that blue. It's so pretty. So the last one of these sold for over a thousand. It was like seventeen hundred buy it now best offer. No, guys, I don't track the value of my cards religiously. I don't download the app and track every single one to figure out what it is. Whenever I get ready to sell it, I will figure that out. But this is enough for me to submit at least at economy. So both of these will likely be submitted at economy. Bobby, my boy Bobby, this will be an economy as soon as I get some more allocations. Again, these are cards I'm worried that there could be a mountain of Bobbies that come back, but I'm not so worried because, again, this is 2019, and yes, print runs were through the roof. They weren't as through the roof as 2020 or 2021, and it's also the Mega Box release, which is much, much more desirable than the base. The Wander Francos have a million tens out there from 2019. And they're holding up pretty well. So I anticipate that Bobby will as well. And a lot of these were also off center. So it's kind of tough finding those gems nowadays, um, especially if you're looking for them. Logan Webb, talked about him on the channel, went to the World Series, did pretty well. My Uber driver gave me a tip on him. So I decided to go all in. I mortgaged my 401k for Logan Webb. Again, we talked about Nick York. This is just another batch that I got all around the same time. So, um, that is why they are all together, and I've got a bunch of them. A lot of Nick York. I think there's tremendous value in Bowman's Best. A lot of people just want to stick to Chrome. There is so much value in Bowman's Best. These are on-card autographs. If you get tens, they will do unbelievably well. There's so much value. All right, that is that stack. We are nowhere near finished, guys. I'm dropping so much info on what I am buying. I'm not saying I'm going to do perfect on this. You never know. All these guys could tank. I mean, we have no Major League Baseball season, so the good thing is, is we have the minors. So it's, it's a good thing that a lot of these guys are in the minors. All right, Robert Hassel, uncirculated. He's another guy that hits very well. A uh, prospect I really like. I slept on 2020 draft. I, I did a really, really bad job. I wasn't focusing on that at the time. Um, and I missed out on a lot of 2020 uh, Bowman draft stuff. Brady House, not sure if this gold is actually going to come back. This is a rookie card, guys, an official Beckett recognized rookie parallel. No, no, it's not a rookie. It's the rookie parallel. Okay. No logo here. I'm not a logo boy. I love that I got a gold refractor of Brady House. It's beautiful. 
Flamethrowers, Joe Burrow, and it's so beautiful. It's numbered to 50. I think this is the orange. I just got a Justin Herbert from the same set, great numbered to 50, also great at PSA 10, so hopefully I can get some smoke and Joe. Also got a yellow parallel. It is a little off left to right. Otherwise, it looks perfect, so hopefully that's within PSA 6040 tolerance. Joe Burrow preview, green and red. Yes, I've got some smoke and Joes. And these are probably going to be economy, at least the ones that I'm confident that get gems. Now we're getting into my Bowman draft stack. So you guys saw some of the big ones that I've already sent off to get graded. These are the next batch that is going out from an autograph perspective. Alex Benalis. I like that he has some power. He's not a prospect that was talked about a lot. He's out of Louisville. Um, I, I don't know how this is going to translate in terms of uh, how he's going to do in the uh, minors. I hope that he smashes. I really, really do. So I've got some stuff of him. Um, again, he was a very low risk, high reward prospect because of his buy-in point being relatively low. So uh, overall, this is looking pretty good. Uh, I got some refractors. Also have the speckle and another speckle. I'm telling you, I went I, I went pretty heavy on these cards. Genesis Gold Refractor. Now we're off to Christian Hernandez. This is his first year of Bowman Chrome, but it is his second release. So obviously he had a base in Bowman Chrome. This is the Bowman Chrome Draft Orange Refractor. So even though it's first year, I still like that I got an orange refractor from his first year. And then another Christian Hernandez. This is the Green Mega Autograph. So I think this one's probably going to be a nine. So I actually might wait for bulk on that. And boy, oh boy, look at that. Hopefully you guys who prospect know how special this card is. This is Harry Ford. Yes, he's a good prospect. He is not in the top 100, but again, he's young. Um, he, he's projected to be one of the breakout candidates for next year, but this is a super, super short print. There are not many of these out there. He is one of the guys that does not have a lot of autographs. This one looks like it might be a 10, but it also is probably going to be a 9. Um, I've debated potentially doing Beckett Raw Card Review at a show uh, with that card. So we'll see. Henry Davis, you all saw that I had two of these uh, that are off to get graded. Here's a blue wave. And I've got plenty of these out there. So two of them were sent off. And here is two more. And now three more. So I really like those. I think that the blue waves overall do pretty well in terms of grading. Jay Allen, this is a regular base chrome, so hopefully this one does well. You all saw that I had an orange refractor of him that's going off. Here is the uh, lava. I think it's aqua lava. Got a blue wave. Have a true gold refractor. Now this one might be one that's a Beckett candidate. Again, it looks a little off top to bottom, but we will see. This is a gold wave. This gold wave is probably going to be a regular order. Maybe maybe the next economy. We'll see. It's a beautiful card. Really sharp. Speckle. And then I got two of these class of 2021 gold refractors. So yeah, guys, I spent went pretty big on Jay Allen. I, I thought that he was relatively undervalued, but I think it looks like his values are starting to creep up a little bit. Here's another big name, Jordan Lawler. So have... Bought three of his blue refractors. I think there's two of them that are probably going to be gem mint. The other one was not gem mint, in my opinion. So that one is not going to be submitted for grading. Jordan Viers, this is the Aqua. I like this kid too. He was under the radar. Performed very well in, in the limited time that we saw him. Here's a true blue. Um, again, I like guys who have some stats. I know Jordan Lawler is the one that scares me a little bit. He played one game and then got hurt, basically. So... Uh, that kind of scares me, um, but I like guys that actually have some statistics. So a couple of the blue sh uh, waves and then also a gold wave. I got the gold wave for a, such a good price. I'm so, so, so happy. Those are probably going to be economies. All of those will likely be economies. I've got a Jordan Vires Lava. And here's another guy that's under the radar. He's he's like a bat only guy. So it's it's not like he's going to be lighting the world on fire, but he's got a lot of pop and he hits for a lot of average. Got a gold uh, wave here. So that one's nice. And then I also got the true orange. So orange auto. It is a beauty. This one is probably going to be express or, or sorry, it's going to be uh, economy or regular. More than likely regular. Man, I got some cards that will definitely be good candidates for regular including this, this actually might be Express, uh, Marcelo Mayer got the blue wave. You all saw I had the gold wave. This is the blue wave. 
and it is a beauty. So hopefully that one comes back a beautiful 10. Next up, TJ White. TJ White. So he is also, again, another guy under the radar. Had a little bit, had some good production in the limited time that we saw him. And just telling you, there, there's just so many cards. So many. Two more batches of cards to review. We're at 20, a little over uh, 24, 25 minutes. So uh, next one, another speckle. TJ uh, White. And then here we go. We've got some really, really nice ones coming up. And now this is our Bowman's best stack. So Benny Montgomery, uh, Gold Lava. Some of these I may have paid a little bit too high in the beginning, but uh, it all balanced out because I think I got the right guys. Christian Hernandez, Blue Refractor. <laughs> so crazy. You can buy these for $100. I mean, if he's supposed to be the prospect that we think he is, again, he had some really good performance in the, uh, I want to say it was the Dominican League. Again, Jay Allen, beautiful card. Blue Refractor, such a nice card. This is the gold, regular, true gold. And I think I have a gold, is that a gold? Yeah, true gold. I have a gold lava somewhere. Maybe it's on, it's on its way. Uh, oh, man, J-Rod. Okay, so I slept on 2019 J-Rod. I was buying a lot of Wander and some other stuff back then. But um, I, I've always liked Julio Rodriguez. I, it's not that I haven't liked him. It's just I, for some reason I just either got outbid or whatever. But boy, oh, boy, I'm telling you, I have loaded up on J-Rod. So let's go one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we got ten base. And I think there's more in here too. There's more and maybe a different stack, but we got the refractor, another refractor. That's three and four. So we got four refractors. So it's 14 autographs of Julio. And I'm pretty sure there's more in here too. So I, I'm going pretty good on Julio. I actually think that he's going to be a huge breakout candidate this year once he makes the bigs. Reginald Preciado, again, I really like this guy. Uh, was in the the um, Padres, got traded in the big pitcher deal uh, to the Cubs. This is the gold lava. And I've got more of these guys coming in, especially the color. Now that, now that Best has been out for a while, the color is starting to come down. So I am really only buying color at this point, whether it be refractors and refractors and up really you can get these refractors i mean one just went at 19.99 un and no bids no bids on it I'm telling you if these guys pop the way that um i think that they will in the minors at least you know there, there's a lot of value here i mean these victor acostas now are down to 10 bucks i mean it's just crazy and i went ahead and snatched them up i mean this is this is a value mill in and out. Like you can't, <laughs> like literally, this is a, a one value mill in and out. If he makes it, this turns into 10 value mills at in and out. Now to do that like a hundred times, I can eat in and out the entire year and off of Victor Acosta. I mean, I'm just saying this is how this stuff works. Victor Acosta refractors, blue refractor. I think I got four of his blues. And <laughs> I'm telling you a lot of this could just like, slap me back in the face because again if, if these guys don't perform and if PSA doesn't lower prices especially for some of the the players who flame out over the summer and don't do well yeah I could be behind the eight ball on a little bit uh, but overall I think I'm gonna be okay I bought four of these Marcelo Mayers this is the best looking one all of them were off-centered and I just did a terrible job of, of reviewing these cards um, online but again this is a little bit off left to right but you know, I still think it's going to be okay. The Lawlers look a little bit better. Oh, maybe off a little bit top to bottom, but the, I think that these other ones are, are good gym candidates. So out of these four, between Lawler and Mayer, I think that I'm probably going to go 50% on Brady House. Uh, that one's a, definitely going to be a gym in my opinion. So we're back to some more random hodgepodge stuff. So Victor Acosta, we got the Speckle, Sparkle, whichever. These are awesome, beautiful cards. Inception orange uh i forget if this is just the regular one or not you would think that thick cards are not clean inception this year was cut clean oh my gosh and then being on card and that thick pulling a 10 on these would just look so great in one of those thick psa cases this is a uh, there's one of these it's like the primordial autographs i want to say but our prim primordial prospects but i got two of those that are orange one is the regular prospect auto and the other one's just the primordial uh prospect auto all right to the final batch final batch guys so this is all the crap that i've been buying 
You'll see a lot of baseball prospects. Again, not many people hype those. There's not a lot of YouTubers that pump them and influence them and manipulate the market. So that's why I'm sticking with our baseball prospects. There's a lot of opportunity there, especially if you get the right ones. Julio Rodriguez rookie card, a rookie card. It is, in fact, a rookie. It's the first card. Well, it's not a rookie. It's the, pro it's the parallel of the rookie. I still call those rookies. I know a lot of people have weird definitions of them. My real definition is that the 2019 Bowman Chrome is Julio's rookie. I value the first license card way more so over the card that is part of the base set. The, the base set is the next thing that I value the most. And then way down at the bottom of the list is something that has a rookie logo on it. That's like the last, that's the bottom criteria for me. I don't, I don't care about that. For me, it's first card, and then it's the card that's part of the base set. So for me, really, 2019 is the, the rookie for me. And I know a lot of people don't like that because they're like, well, somebody said it's got a rookie logo on it. It's got to be a rookie. There are so many examples of tops deliberately manipulating the rookie rules um, Wander Franco, Jordan Alvarez, Alex Bregman, Kyle Schwarber. There are so many examples of deliberate manipulation where prospects that should be in update and a lot of the fall and December releases are held back to sell 20, the, the uh, Topps flagship Series 1 product. I've done a phenomenal job, I'm patting myself on the back, documenting this and really are showing how their timelines have changed throughout the year from their, their cutoffs of when they call a, a player a rookie before they, they hand them off to the next year. And it's just amazing watching how that timeline has shrunk so that Tops can make more money the next year by slapping a rookie logo on those guys. I'm not falling for it. I urge you all not to fall for it because it's deliberate manipulation. They're doing that to maximize money, to maximize revenue, and to call rookies or cards rookie cards that are not rookie cards. It's just they're not rookie cards. So that's my take on it. I'm sure a lot of people are going to disagree with that, which, again, it's a hobby. Everybody can have an opinion on it. There's no rules. There's no governing body that's saying this is how things are supposed to be. I have a very, very strong opinion on it because to me it seems very clear. It's night and day that tops, and it's not really tops, it's, it's the MLBPA, it's the Major League Baseball Players Association. They're the ones that set the criteria because they're sitting back looking at which guys just joined our union that we can make a lot of money off of. Oh, Wander Franco. Oh, let's hold him over and maximize him for a year. This is the fourth year that we've seen Wander Franco, Major League Baseball cards. He was signed by a Major League team in 2019. Tampa Bay, or maybe it's 2018. Uh, I can't remember when he signed. But a Major League Baseball team paid him a Major League Baseball contract, or at least you know, seven-figure contract, four years ago. And he has a card. And we're calling the one four years later a rookie when he was a rookie rookie in the majors in 2021. So the thing that they're trying to solve with this stupid rookie logo is actually backfiring because it's on a year where he's not classifying himself as a rookie. It's like this guy played in the playoffs and hit a home run like he had enough at bats to be a rookie in 2021. Why are we calling this a rookie? Like it just it's so stupid. But I'm buying them. Because other people are going to buy them, and I'm going to sell them. Just like, you know, they're going to want something with a rookie because they think it's a rookie. So it, I'm happy. I mean, it gives me another selling opportunity. You know, I, I think it's phenomenal. Look how beautiful this Patrick Mahomes is. And yes, oh yes, this is the black gold number four of eight. This will probably be an economy card. I don't think it is going to tin, so I'm probably going to lose a couple hundred bucks on it, to be honest. So if that happens, I may actually stash it in the PC. You know how that goes. I usually don't ever do that. I told you guys I had some Brady's. I told you guys I've graded two of these before. And guess what? I'm going to grade two more because gosh dang it, I'm going to get a PSA 10 and I'm going to put it in my PC. Whether I have to buy every living freaking one on the planet, I will buy one until I get a 10. And once I get my 10, it will not leave my possession because this is my favorite insert that Pupini has ever released. It's such a cool card. And I just actually bought another one 15 minutes ago, uh, one of my Snipes sets. So I've got three of them now. Aaron Donald, uh, I've got a couple of his prisms. Uh, looks like 
I don't think these are actually going to gem. If I get one gem out of them, I'll be happy. But again, if I submit them in a bulk order, he's a Super Bowl champion. He's arguably the greatest defender. I don't like him because he chokes people, and uh, that's not cool. You're not really supposed to choke humans. But despite his anger problems and despite him getting carried away on the field, people recognize him as the greatest defender of our generation. And because he's now a Super Bowl champion, he's multiple-time pro bowler, his rookie PSA 10 card, whether it be Prism or whether it be these black refractors, are going to do very, very, very well. So, uh, yeah, as soon as they won the Super Bowl, I was like, all right. It's like the Freddie Freeman. He's got a Super Bowl and he's got a World Series. He will be forever collected. And that's what we need to focus on, especially with uh, moving forward. Guys who we know are going to have a solid collector base moving forward, I think, are definitely safe plays. Anthony Volpe, this is the opposite of that, I think. We definitely got to see what's going on with Anthony Volpe. But again, I think these are low risk, high rewards. He is the next uh, Derek Jeter for the New York Yankees. So those are the first edition Bowmans. I love grading these cards. I would buy every single one of these that come to market. If they come to market, it's Michael Jordan Goodwin Mini. It's the last year of Upper Deck. This is the mini version, which is uh, um, obviously not the base card, but they do so, so well. Him soaring over the clouds is such just, it's just an iconic card. I mean, if they blew this up into a poster, I could see myself just rocking this back in the 90s, like this hanging on my wall as you walk into my bedroom. Like, this is just classic 90s. It speaks to me, and I know it speaks to a lot of MJ collectors out there. Mad Max, man, he bolted out of L.A. and went for the money in New York. Join the stinking Mets, where he's going to get no run support, all because he wants to maximize his money, and now you see him out there with the Major League Baseball Players Association saying, we want a fair deal, after he just signed for an ungodly amount of money. And he went to a stupid team in New York who's not going to give him any runs, all for money. And here he is, you know, locking himself out of money because, hey, we want some fair deals, man. Come on. <laughs> so stupid. Don't get me started on that. All right, rookies and stars, stellar rookies. Justin Herbert. This is why we like the Shield. This is why, because the stars, just there's not a lot of that type of controversy, at least in the guys that we like. Um, Cooper Cup, beautiful card. This is a select Field level silver prism, beautiful card. Again, he is now immortalized. He got the triple crown in the receiving category. He a uh, Super Bowl MVP. I mean, again, he's going to be collected. Uh, so that's why I got it. I actually picked up these uh, Joe Burrow mosaics. Again, this is ultra modern junk, but it is a parallel. I actually got these in person um, at a show recently, so I was able to uh, see them in person. So I paid about 50 bucks a piece for them. I think gems are in the 150 to 200 range. So those will probably be an uh, uh, ultra modern bulk submission whenever that's available. Hopefully Joe Burrow does not blow out his legs or the Bengals like get him killed before I get those back from PSA because if they don't bolster their offensive line, that is a high probability. All right, Victor Acosta, Bowman's best. Again, told you all about him. More Wander. Again, these are all scattered now. Tom Brady, like the last half of this deck is a little bit scattered, but they're not scattered in my Excel spreadsheet. Tops Pristine, got another one of those. That one looks good. Here's a mini Aaron Donald Pulsar. It's numbered to 102. Really cool card. I know people don't like minis, but once you put it in a PSA case, it fits uniformly with everything. It looks like a T206 Wagner. And of course, we know how expensive that is. Julio Rodriguez, I told you I got more. So this is number 11. This is number 12. And this is number five for the refractor. So a lot of these guys, I would like to submit some of these at economy. Probably, um, I'm, I'm not in a hurry because, again, I don't think that uh, we have to worry about Julio getting up until the end of the year. Patrick Mahomes, this is this year's classics. It's the blank, black, uh, blank back parallel, number 25. We're winding it down, guys. I'm winding down. Y'all just hang on. Hang tight. All right, Reginald Preciado, the gold lava. We've talked about him. Talked about our guy, Nick York. We have not talked about Mac Daddy, but this is the Crusade Parallel, number 99. So I think that that's, that's not a bad one to get graded at, say, maybe, maybe economy. Maybe, maybe. We'll see. Again, we talked about Robert Hassel. This is a cheap autograph. If these guys again pop, this is a card I would love to submit in bulk. Um, autograph. It's not a base card. It's not a 
Now, base parallel, this, this is not Jump Top Series 1 base cards. These are autographs, so cheap autographs that um, of guys who actually have a lot of potential in the minors. So I'm a fan. Even though if it's junk, it's still, you know, um, I'm a fan. And this is a guy that I just started reading about. This is a Yankee prospect. Um, it's Everson Pereira. I'm sure I'm butchering that. Uh, I got his Topps Chrome Pro debut red refractor. Again, this is going to be an ultra modern bulk, but this guy's got a little bit of pop. Um, and he's been climbing up the Yankees uh, prospect chart. So I, I liked him. I'm going to look into him a little bit more and maybe get a, more of his stuff. Shame on me for forgetting another stack of cards and perhaps one of the best stacks of all my purchases. I'm sure some of you were like, you spend $60,000 on that? I completely forgot that I had this stack, but also a stack of cards that I've already vetted um, and they were rejected. They were rejects in terms of them not being grading candidates. So uh, the grading, non-grading candidates, they have been shipped off for consignment. So I can't show you all of those, but I will show you this stack, which is a very important stack, especially if you are looking at the beginning of the video. So here we go. We're going to take a look at these cards. So first up, Topps Chrome Big Baller Shohei Otani. This is not going to make the grading cut because it's clearly been looked over for grading. You all can see the surface on this has dimples. It's also got scratches. Not good, not good. Uh, it's about $1,000 that I spent on this card, so that's not going to be a grading candidate, unfortunately. Next up, oh boy, here we go. We've got Patty Cakes Autograph Patch. And yes, this is a single color patch. You all have seen this card before. I believe I've got it right here. You guys have been patient. I'm rewarding the patience of the, of the team here. So there are two or 10 of these, and I've got two of them. This card should be a gem mint card in my opinion. It's 0.5 away. I just got a, a crooked grader. Uh, they, they were really, really critical of this card. I don't know if I've actually shown this one off on the channel or not yet either. Um, it's coming. This one's coming. Um, so yeah, I, the day that we were playing the, uh, Buffalo Bills in the playoffs, I got FOMO. I'm telling you soon, one of the touchdown drives in the last two minutes, I forget which one it was. I was about to ship bricks. As I said previously, I went to eBay and I put in a billion dollars on a bunch of Patrick Mahomes cards. And this is one of the cards I got. That's one of them. And here's another one by golly. Got an autographed patch. And yes, I have, I've had some Patrick Mahomes cards previously. This is not a great one. It is, I believe, a second year autograph patch. It's, on, it's a sticker, but we do have the full signature. So that's the selling point of this card. It is a fake jersey patch that I make fun of all the time, just like everything that Poopini makes. But at least Patrick Mahomes is able to use his full signature on this. No, this is not a grading candidate, and that's not a grading candidate either, unfortunately. But they may be something that I would submit uh, to get the autograph authenticated. So that may be something that is in the cards. And now we're just getting better. I mean, each card we go down, we just get better and better and better. So this one, Patrick Mahomes National Treasures Personalized. This is an autograph on card uh, number two of ten. The autograph may have a minor streak in it, but what I like about this card is it is it's a gradable card. I, I think that this is definitely something that we could send in to get at least a, a PSA nine. And for an on-card autograph, I'm okay with that. Getting a PSA 9 or higher, I think, is something that's going to be pretty good. So I think that's a good thing. Uh, next up, we're just getting better and better. My computer here is going crazy. Let's cut that bad boy off so we don't have to listen to any more dings. Next up. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, I had an impeccable autograph patch Patrick Mahomes PSA 9 that I sold right at the beginning of the season sold it shipped it out to Pennsylvania and the dang U.S. Postal Service lost it in the mail $3,500 in my PayPal account got sucked out of there dry and there I am out a missing patty and also my money so I had to go back to the well and get another on-card autograph fake jersey patch of Patrick Mahomes, and it's a beauty. It's directly from the Panini factory over there in Italia, 
And this will probably be a PSA 8 or a PSA 9. It is uncirculated, but a little bit off center. That corner doesn't look all that great. It's, it's just how these cards are. So the last one that I graded got a PSA 9, and I did good on it. This one's probably also going to get a PSA 9, and it's a two-color patch. But that's not the best one. I got one more, one more fat patty cake. And this one is the PS de Resistance. And it is an on-card autograph patch of Patrick Patty Cakes Mahomes himself. Three colors, numbered 5 of 10 from National Treasures. What I like about every one of these cards is this is from 2019. It's the year that he won his first Super Bowl. So I like to call these the Super Bowl Patty Cake Autographs. Um, I, I like that. I like that it's from the first Super Bowl year. It's, it, what would be better is if it's a rookie. The next best thing is probably the full autograph from 2018. The next best thing out of that is the, the first Super Bowl year. So I, I like that. And believe it or not, I bought this from the man himself, from old Ricky Probstein. And yes, a lot of people will say, and, and even me to some extent, that you run the risk of... Uh, buying cards that are not gradable whenever you're buying them from consigners. And in fact, my raw card sales through through Probstein are way lower. I would say on average 20% lower than a, a comp of the same card through a private seller because I think that's starting to get out. But there are still gems out there. And whenever I took a look at this card, and there, there could be something that I'm missing. I haven't really messed around with this card all that much. But whenever I looked at this card, I didn't see really anything wrong with the edges or corners noticeably that would you know make this you know basically be a PSA seven or eight or lower. This looks like it could have a, a good chance at a nine, in my opinion. And for me to get an autograph patch and a nine with a ten autograph or something close to a ten autograph, I'm a okay with that. And you know, getting all these together. Uh, definitely something I wanted to do, especially, you know, my home uh, stuff immediately after the loss to the Bengals took a little bit of a dip. We're kind of seeing an uptick since, uh, since that loss. Uh, Mahomes is going to be the talk of the offseason. Uh, he's you can already see some upward movement. Optic PSA tens were in the thousand range. The the ones that I sold they were in the thousand range. Now they're up to thirteen fifty, up to fifteen hundred. So you know there's movement in Mahomes cards even in the early parts of the offseason, which is exciting. It's only going to get better as we go closer to the year. But getting all of these autographs. To me, I'm very, very happy about these. I mean, just beautiful cards. Got five autographs of him, uh, plus the rookie autographs that I have, as well as you know the autograph patch. You know, I'm starting to get a pretty good Patrick Mahomes collection um, in terms of autographs, not just the rookie stuff, but also autographs. Which is, you know, if we look at Tom Brady and what his autographs are going for, especially the on-card ones. I mean, uh, yes, he's Tom Brady. I get it. Uh, but you know, Patrick Mahomes, that's, that's where those cards could go. So, uh, and he's my favorite player. I mean, come on, come on, come on. All right. Now we're officially going to close this out. So let's switch back over. But I know guys, we are up to almost about 40 minutes. So thank you all for checking in with this. Let me know what y'all think. Uh, you could probably spend $60,000 a lot of different ways. And a lot of people would probably, if you got a lump sum of that, would spend it a little bit differently. But this is me slowly selling things, getting money buying, getting money buying, getting money buying, and also hopefully trying to buy the right stuff that has just come out that I know is going to grade very well. Bowman Draft looked clean. Bowman's Best looked clean. Uh, much better than the fall release of Bowman Chrome, which was a complete disaster. It looks like Tops kind of fixed that a little bit. Um, yeah, and I got plenty of stuff here that's going to be able to send uh, send off economy, regular, express. Uh, I'll be able to get some stuff back and keep that money turning while I can make money on the big stuff and just sit on that cheap base stuff and wait for bulk to come back. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, that's really what I've been buying. That's my strategy. Let me know uh, what you guys think. Have you guys been buying something similar, different? Uh, what are your thoughts? Always like to hear from you. So thanks for checking me out and we'll see you next time.